because we're all going to London! And you and you and you and you are going to London! Hey girlies, welcome to today's video. I'm trying something new and I'm quite excited about it. Recently, I've noticed that my favorite YouTube videos have been longer formatted videos and these aren't just video essays. These happen to be retellings or recounts of some of my favorite TV shows, movies, books, etc. Some of my favorites are Mike's Mike PLL series, which deserves to be nominated for an Emmy for Best Limited Series. I've also been loving this one creator, Ashley Norton's video, where she breaks down the clickbook series and movie. So make sure to check that out if you haven't. If you're into books and reading like I am, I really loved Carrie Kim Reed's explanation of Crescent City Books by Sarah J Mass. I absolutely hated the book, but thoroughly enjoyed this chaotic breakdown. There's one thing I'm an expert at, it's Disney Channel original movies and niche teen dramas. And if I could get a graduate degree in the early 2000s through 2010s teen dramas, I would. I specifically want to focus on the more forgotten early teen dramas of my youth. Uh, you know that one really good show that got cancelled after one or two seasons that has a dangerously vibrant Tumblr or fanfic community? That's exactly what I need to discuss. As you already know from the title of this video, we will be discussing the first season of Make It or Break It. A Again, I haven't done this sort of video before, but I've also been thinking of doing the CW show with Hellcat, Greek, and the OC if you guys like this video. Make It or Break It was an ABC Family, now Freeform, original. It premiered in June 2009 and it followed a group of elite gymnasts as they strive to reach their goal of competing in the 2012 Olympics. Also, a disclaimer, I will simply be recounting the events and giving my opinions of the plot. I am not a gymnast or athlete, so I cannot speak to the accuracy of the logistics of American gymnastics that are portrayed in the show. I am but a mere spectator. Friends, I would like to welcome you to Boulder, Colorado, home of the Rocky Mountain Gymnastics Training Center, aka The Rock. Please pay no mind to the atrocious Green Screen Mountains. This gym is the best gym to train at for artistic gymnastics in the US, and you're apparently no one if you don't train at The Rock. Cho followed three girls who train at The Rock and their families. I'll introduce you to them now. First, we have the Cruises. Mr. Cruz is an ex-professional baseball player who is still attempting to live out his glory days through vicariously living through his teenage gymnast daughter. He is also the co-founder and co-manager of The Rock, so he's very hands-on in his daughter's career. Then we have Mrs. Cruz, who's an ex-singer of this hit band in the 80s, I believe. She gave up her career of being a singer to marry Mr. Cruz and does not at all regret it. Lastly, we have one of our main characters, Kaylee Cruz. She's a 16-year-old gymnast at The Rock. She's known for being pretty sweet and easygoing. Even though she's one of the best gym's athletes, she's easily distracted when it comes to life outside the gym. Take a good look at them folks because they're basically the only people of color in the show you'll see for a while. So soak it up. Our next family is a Tanner. Mr. Ted Tanner is the other co-founder slash co-manager of the gym. He is very wealthy and has a daughter named Lauren who trains at the gym. Lauren is one of Kaylee's two best friends. They trained together since they were six, so it's been 10 years. She is the mean girl of the rock and dare I say she would make Blair Waldorf proud. If the actress looks familiar, it's because she is in one of my favorite Bring It On films and it's when it. Lastly, we have the Keelers. Kim and Mark Keeler aren't like the other two families. Unlike them, I take the Keelers are upper middle class instead of the typical upper class. Mr. Keeler works somewhere that isn't important and Miss Keeler is a homemaker who focuses on supporting her daughter's career. Their daughter Payson, who is Lauren and Kaylee's other best friend, is the star gymnast. She is the Simone Biles of the gymnast world, except much worse and not at all comparable talent-wise. But Payson Keeler is the one to watch to go and dominate at the 2012 Olympics. She is incredibly determined and is willing to sacrifice everything for her career in gymnastics, something I can't say her friends are are ready to do. Let's jump into episode one because it starts off with a bang. So our story begins at The Rock and not so coincidentally the absolute banger of a song Let It Rock is playing. It's a big day, it's the morning before the national tryouts and all the girls at the gym are fighting to represent their gym at this year's national gymnastics competition. Our girls pacing Kaylee and Lauren believe they're a shoe in Payson's bound to get ranked the top spot because she always comes in first, while Kaylee and Lauren usually interchange between ranking two and three. Face it, Payson's been number one for most of the year. Okay, whatever, I'm just saying, we've always been the top three. 
So they're getting ready, they're doing their thing, when out of nowhere, a new girl bursts through the doors of the gym, and if you can't tell by her plain Leo and toppy brown hair, she's poor. And ladies and gentlemen, we have met our last main family of The Rock, the Kometkos. New to town, Chloe and her daughter, Emily Kometko, are weird outsiders. When they watch Emily do her sick tumbling pass, they start to think, hmm, maybe we should be quaking. Well, actually, Lauren and Kaylee are like, maybe we should be quaking. Payson respects Emily because she has skill. And it's not just the girls who know this. Regular gym parents are looking at each other like, who is this girl and where did she come from? Come to find out, the coach of the gym, Marty Walsh, who I will be calling Hot Marty from now on because as you will notice, he is hot. According to him, she is the new American Gymnastics Scholarship kid who they discovered on a literal playground. Immediately, Lauren goes on the defense. What can I do with her? That girl could knock any one of us out of the top three. With your new floor routine, you're a lock. You just smile and flip your hair and you pull it out of your ass. Because here's the thing, only the girls who rank the top three at The Rock can go on and compete in the national championships. Everyone assumed it would be Payson, Lauren, and Kaylee. But with Emily coming in out of nowhere, she could change everything. Lauren's a schemer and she tells Kaylee, hey, Payson doesn't have anything to worry about because she's always number one and we're the ones that are vulnerable. With a little convincing, Lauren gets Kaylee in the entire gym besides Payson to essentially ice Emily out. No one talks to her, no one cheers her on, everyone is just incredibly hostile. During practice, we see Kaylee throw some flirty looks at this guy gymnast. What's that about? We don't know yet because we're brought back to Lauren who's absolutely dominating the beam. She is known as the queen of the beam and she always ranks number one on beam. Lauren is also happy to discover Emily's weakness during practice which happens to be the vault and Lauren definitely takes note of this. Also during training, Hot Marty pulls Emily aside and lets her know that there is no dating allowed at The Rock. In his words, We catch you with a boy and you're out. The show said the gays? We don't know them. This rule applies to every gymnast he coaches. Do not forget that rule. Eventually, practice ends and Emily's mom forgets to pick her up, so she ends up walking home. But uh-oh, what does Emily spy on her way home? Kaylee's making out with the guy she was making eyes at at the gym. We learn his name is Carter and he's an 18-year-old who's also training at the gym. And Emily says to herself, that's in my business, and she moseys her way on home. Back at home, Emily's mom apologizes for not picking her up. She's been in a lot of stress financially and Emily knows this and tells her mom that's why she already has her first shift at the Pizza Shack, which you will come to learn is the only restaurant that exists in this town of Boulder, Colorado. So keep in mind, Emily is a full-time competitive gymnast while balancing homeschooling and a part-time job. Like, she's a girl boss. Switching storylines, we've just pulled up to the cruise's literal mansion. Carter tells Kaylee that they need to come out and be open with her dad because they've been together for over a year and he's tired of hiding their love. And Kaylee immediately shuts that down. She's like, nah, my dad will literally impale you. Not literally, but she does paint a graphic picture. And this is all happening in the driveway. So when Lauren pulls up to Kaylee's house, she's a little suspicious. Kaylee insists that he was just dropping her off and nothing's going on. Anyways, at work at the pizza shop, Emily meets this guy named Razor, yes, Razor, who of course immediately has a crush on her. Razor professes that he's emo and is in a band. Dual singing, myself, emo. You like emo? Before asking Emily what her quote unquote thing is. For some reason, Emily doesn't want to tell him or really anyone for that matter outside the gym that she's a gymnast. I mean, personally, she wants to get to the Olympics, so I don't really know how long that's supposed to work out for her, but you know, to each their own. On the morning of the competition, Emily wakes up late and rushes to the gym with her mother. The competition starts and things are looking great for all three girlies, but not for long. Lauren is in the middle of nailing her beam routine when she loses balance and falls on the mat. This means that Emily really has a shot at the top three. Emily does a beam routine and nails it, bumping Emily solidly into the top three and Lauren into fourth place. Lauren decides to take matters into her own hands. While everyone's paying attention to Payson's vault, Lauren alters the measurements for Emily's vault, a snake move indeed. When it's Emily's turn to vault, she completely eats it. Like, y'all, it is bad. That fall looked extremely painful. Of course, everyone freaks out. Come on, Emily. Don't move her, don't touch her. Emily. Emily, can you hear me? Emily? And Emily's pulled out of the competition and has to wait in Pop Marty's office until the ambulance comes. Lauren is living her best life because she's back in third, 
with Emily gone. But wait a minute, who's that coming down the stairs? It's Emily Kometko refusing to go to the hospital and demanding that she get her second fault. Marty says he can't endorse it, but he also can't stop her. And this time Emily sets her own measurements. I just know Lauren is quaking in her boot. The vault alone gets Emily back into third and bumps Lauren down into fourth. Don't ask me if that can even be done. The logistics of the show are none of my business. If you thought this was bad, it just gets messier. Lauren is livid about getting into fourth. She tells Marty in front of everyone. Haley C and Carter. Don't, don't. Ask them where they were yesterday. Ask the coaches if they were here like they said they were. Y'all, when I tell you I was gagged. Kaylee is literally Lauren's best friend of 10 years and the way she just threw her on the bus like that, yikes. Kaylee, of course, denies it because she's not stupid and Lauren keeps pushing back. I know Kaylee was fighting for her life to not slap the mess out of Lauren and out of nowhere, Emily interrupts and says that Kaylee was with her yesterday and Carter only gave her a ride. Kaylee immediately agrees to this lie because it's her only way out and thanks Emily for having her back. The drama doesn't end there though because later that day after everyone goes home, Lauren's dad, Mr. Tanner, finds Coach Marty in his office. We find out, and I can't make this up y'all, Mr. Tanner hired a PI, a private investigator, to look into Emily Kometko. A 16 year old girl, sir, you have to get a life. But Mr. Tanner tells Hot Marty his PI didn't find anything on Emily, but he did find something interesting on Hot Marty and slips Hot Marty the envelope. Marty looks at the envelope and is like, what do you want? As an audience, we are not yet privy to the information that's in that envelope. Mr. Tanner says that he wants Marty to move and coach a whole different gym in Denver, conveniently called the Denver Club. Not only that, but Mr. Tanner wants him to take Lauren and the rest of the girls who rank through seventh place, so that spots four through seven, all leaving and moving to train at a different club. Literal insanity. They're breaking up the entire club. Oh, and Marty, at Denver? Could you be sure Lauren goes in the top three? The next day, the girlies show up at The Rock to train, only to find out that Marty skedaddled. Mason, rightfully so, has a freak out. I did everything right. Everything. I haven't had a weekend off my whole childhood. And now my coach just leaves? Kaylee confronts Lauren as she's about to leave, but Lauren has no sympathy whatsoever. In fact, the only person she's really mad at is Emily. And you have no consistency. I'm gonna make sure you get buried in Boston. At the end of the pilot, the girls at The Rock are left with no coach and some of the best girls have left right before nationals. The drama, guys, I live. So that episode sets up the entire scene for the first season. Moving forward, I won't go into as much detail as I did with the first episode unless it's really important, but you clicked on the video knowing the length, so strap in because things only get crazier. Beginning episode two, Kaylee's older brother, Leo, comes to town. We don't know too much about Leo. All we know is that he's a college student who for some reason is always in town and was an ex-gymnast who was actually allegedly pretty good until he decided to quit. I say allegedly because at no point in time do we ever see him do gymnastics or show any knowledge about gymnastics whatsoever. But anyways, that's Leo Cruz. In the wake of Marty leaving and being deserted without a coach, three girlies are on a witch hunt to find Hot Marty and get answers. Payson is pissed and wants to see Hot Marty because she doesn't see why he would abandon them after training with him for two years. Kaylee's mostly pissed and wants to tussle with Lauren and Emily tags along because she needs Marty's signature on her scholarship forms. If she doesn't get his signature, she won't be able to receive her money and get training, which is bad on another level because her family relies on that scholarship money as part of their income. And so the girlies drive to Denver. On the ride there, we also get introduced to Payson's little sister, Becca. She's kind of irrelevant. She's just there. She's also a gymnast, but she's not as good as Payson yet. In the car, they play Who Would You Rather Kiss? Payson says that she would kiss Barack Obama, which gives me the laugh. Love that girl. Come on, who would you marry then? I, I don't know, Becca. Barack Obama. He's married. Once they arrive at the Denver club, Payson comes in guns blazing and yells at Hot Marty. Payson is under the impression that she doesn't have any chance of succeeding at nationals, so Marty purposely says a bunch of rude things to her so that she will get mad at him and be motivated to beat him. I think these girls are better than you. Now I am going to kick the ass of every single girl in here. I am going to be 10 times better without you than I ever was with you. If that isn't enough, we literally get one of the best scenes in cinematic history. I can't believe this takes place on this second episode. So on the way back to Boulder, the girls stop at a gas station 
but while they're there, they get catcalled by these loser boys who have nothing to do with their lives. Emily tells them to back off, but they say, what are you going to do if we don't? And I kid you not, I cannot make this up. Payson looks at Emily and goes, follow me. And just starts aggressively doing a series of cartwheels and aerials towards a group of guys. And they are quaking. They've clearly never indulged in the epic highs and lows of gymnastics or even the simple cartwheel. So for some reason, which I don't care to explain, Kaylee can't drive Emily home, so her older brother Leo does. And of course, because it's a mid to late 2000s ABC Family show, the college age man starts flirting with a 16 year old, literally run at Emily, get this man away from her. Back at home, Emily's mom is so excited that Emily got the scholarship sorted out, so she decides to go out for a late night drive and get ice cream which we will in fact get back to. Hopping to the other part of town, we see Kaylee's mom knock on some random door. Whose is it? Hot Marty's. So this is where you find out that Mr. Tanner, who is Lauren's dad, if you'll remember, was blackmailing Hot Marty about his affair with none other than Kaylee's mother, Mrs. Cruz. I wanted to come by and thank you for not letting Tanner expose our relationship. They say goodbye. And then for some reason, immediately start making out, but I can't blame her because I mean, it's hot Marty. And it's a good thing no one sees them, right? It's the middle of the night, they're safe. Wrong, because y'all remember Miss Kim Etko's little ice cream run? Yeah, she just so happened to be driving down Marty Street and saw the whole thing. The episode ends with Mr. Tanner getting a call from hot Marty. I'm not gonna be at your back and call anymore. I'm gonna do what I wanna do from now on. He can't be tamed. He's in his Miley Cyrus era. And that is episode two. Episode three is a game changer. It really is. Mr. Tanner, the incredibly extra man that he is, is still pissed at Hot Marty for not wanting to be blackmailed. Like who does that? So inconsiderate. So instead of trying to find another really good coach in the area, he flies all the way out to California to track down one Sasha Belov. Please welcome our Romanian king, Sasha Belov, to the character board. We find out that he was an incredibly well-known gymnast termed recluse Fisher that hates people. Sasha is not at all happy to see Mr. Tanner when he shows up in his woods. Sasha tells Mr. Tanner that he's left the gymnastics world and absolutely refuses to coach Lauren and the Denver club. That club team you had back at The Rock, that was the best I've seen in a decade. If The Rock was still together, we might have had something to talk about. At The Rock, the girls are busy training and making do with Mr. Cruz as an impromptu coach and Kaylee is a little on the verge of killing her father. But then out of nowhere, Mr. Tanner and Lauren casually sashay into the gym. The entire gym is like immediately, no, we do not want you here, die. Okay, they didn't tell them to die, but Payson does say this iconic line. If someone doesn't hold me back, she's gonna get my heel up or bleach blonde head. I'm not holding you back. Mr. Cruz is also ready to throw hands and tells them that they don't need anything from them, so they should just get out. And Mr. Tanner is like, you sure? Because we have the best coach in the game. The rock girlies are like, yeah, you snatched hot Marty up, we get it. But then Mr. Tanner says, mm -mm -mm, and then the garage door dramatically opens. Oh my God. Sasha Belov. The scene cracks me up because why couldn't he have just walked in the front door like the Tanners did? But no, he wanted his big dramatic moment. Instantly, everyone's gagged. They can't believe that a gym legend such as he is in their presence. Payson immediately is on board because Sasha Belov, it's Sasha Belov. Haley. It's Sasha Belov. Kaylee, on the other hand, is pissed because if Sasha comes and coaches them and Lauren comes and she doesn't want anything to do with Lauren, Sasha gathers up all the rock girlies. Here we get the first of many intense and cliche speeches that we will see throughout the series. We have only 49 days until nationals and you will spend every waking moment of it in this gym. Go home and say goodbye to your lives as you know it. After practice, Emily, Kaylee, and Payson decide to go to a smoothie place. It's there that they see Lauren across the way and remember that it's Lauren's birthday as well. I promise this information will all be important later. Girlies are sipping their smoothies and giggling when this random guy comes and invites them to a kegger. The show loves the word kegger. Kaylee thinks that they should go as their last fun thing before their lives are over, which Payson immediately rejects. Kaylee says she's gonna go and Emily agrees to go with her since she hasn't checked out the party scene yet in Boulder. Girl, what party scene? You're literally 16, go home and do your homework. Begrudgingly, Payson agrees to go just so that she can keep an eye on them. And that's where we get this awful pun. We're gonna party like rock stars. Do you get it? The rock 
star. Yeah. Now it's party time. It's kegger time. Guess who we bump into in line for beer? Razor and his strange bandmate. There's two of them, but we never see the third guy again. So the only one you need to know is Damon Young. Across town, Lauren and her dad are currently at this restaurant that they always go to for her birthday, just the two of them. Except this time, Mr. Tanner ambushes Lauren's dinner by inviting Summer, his assistant. Lauren immediately accuses her of being a gold digger. And to ease the tension, Mr. Tanner gives Lauren her birthday gift, which is a new charm for her charm bracelet that he gets her every year. And she always looks forward to it. Mr. Tanner is a literal bozo because he lets it slip that for the past few years, it's actually been Summer picking out the charms and not her father like Lauren thought. It's starting to feel more like the third wheel than the birthday girl. Taking dad's car. I'm sure you'll get him home. At the party, sorry, back at the kegger, Kaylee is literally off her face and is in the middle of doing a keg stand when she sees Carter. They obviously get into a fight because Carter's mad that she lied and is ignoring him and they decide to take a break from their relationship. Razor and Damon see Emily getting in Theo's car to go home and both get jealous. Razor immediately tells Damon that Emily's his girl, so back off. However, in the same breath, he also asks Damon to look after her and cover for him at the pizza shack while he does a roadie gig for a few weeks. Razor, how do you think this is really gonna end? In the car while driving her home, Theo and Emily get to talking and he tells Emily that she's not like most girls her age. Emily, run. Theo is a freak. Please leave her alone. Back to Lauren, after stealing her dad's car, Lauren decides to head to the kegger, you know, where the entire town seems to be, and gets drunk. And who does she see across the way but a drunk Carter? They have a pity party and talk about how selfish Kaylee is. It's always about her. That's Kaylee. She's always gotta have everybody chasing after her. Lauren is pushing the narrative and truly believes that Kaylee is spoiled and gets everything and Lauren gets nothing. The two say goodnight and hug. And nah, I'm just kidding. They literally sleep together in some guy's raggedy shed and this disgusting couch. They're so messy. They're literally so messy. In case you're keeping score, Lauren has just lost her virginity to her best friend, Kaylee's boyfriend, Carter. That was mouthful. This is Major. Being the rat he is, Carter quickly scurries off, but he leaves his phone in the process. Worry not because Lauren finds it in one of the couch cushions. And there's a text from Kaylee saying that she's sorry they fought and that she loves him. Oh, sweetie, you're in for a rude awakening. Upon reading the text, Lauren starts crying crocodile tears. Girl, we do not care. One thing about Make It or Break It, they love an ironic moment. Episode four starts out with Lauren sitting at a church pew with her dad and Summer. And I kid you not, the pastor just happens to be preaching the most aggressive guilt-inducing sermon on purity. And it's honestly funny. Also say hey to the pastor because it's the only time you'll see a black person speaking in this show for a little bit. So after the sermon, Lauren accuses her father of pretending to be Christian just so he can get with Summer. And this is where he reveals that Summer is waiting till marriage actually really refreshing these days when women and girls are willing to give it up to just about anybody will give them the time of day. This is the genesis of a major theme that we will continue to see in the show, which is toxic purity culture. Waiting for marriage is great if that's what you want, but purity culture is a whole other beast that we will get into further in the season. Sasha calls in the girls on a Sunday for an early meeting and Emily freaks out because she has a double shift at the pizza shack. So instead she sends her mom in to cover for her at work. Didn't know we could do that. Um, we'll immediately be sending my mom to cover for me. So the girls are confused because it's only the four of them at the gym, Payson, Lauren, Emily, and Kaylee. Then, and I can't make this up, you guys, this show's so chaotic. Sasha walks out and tosses them each a can of beer. You know, just cracking a cold one with the underage girlies. We love to see it. Literally, what is happening? Cheers. I thought you all wanted to be Olympic gymnasts, but apparently I was wrong. Let's get stupid. Lauren tries to lie and says that she wasn't at the party, but there's literally a stamp on her wrist. So girl, you have to be better at lying. I thought you were better than this. And if just one of you screws up even a little bit, then I am out of here. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. I think that The Rock forgot to make him sign a contract because I'm pretty sure you can't do that. Meanwhile, Carter goes over to Kaylee's house to see her, but Leo tells him that she's at practice at The Rock. Carter does a lot of stupid things throughout the series because he's literally an idiot. And this is definitely one of those times. He, for some reason, unbeknownst to anyone, tells Leo, Kaylee's older brother, that he cheated on Kaylee with Lauren. Like, why would you tell him that? Leo proceeds to telling Carter, 
that he shouldn't tell Kaylee because it would ruin the dynamic of the entire gym. Then Leo punches Carter in the balls. What do you guys think of this advice? I'm usually always on the side of telling the girl she's being cheated on, but it is really crunch time with nationals coming up and I do want Kaylee to succeed and this will only distract her. But at the end of the day, she does deserve to know, so it is a tricky one. Sasha does team bonding exercises with the rock girlies. He tells them to write down any resentments they've been harboring towards each other and they'll crumble them up and burn them. The notes, not the girls. This exercise is meant for them to release the past and move to the future as a team. But surprise, he's reading them out loud first. So Payson's note says that she trains harder than anyone. A uh, girl did not hold back but is she wrong? She is not. Kaylee wrote how she resents that Lauren tried to get her kicked out of the gym. Lauren wrote that- My friends who I've known and trained with for 10 years didn't stand up for me when Miss Trailer Trash showed up. She has no technique and no consistency and will tank at Nationals exclamation mark. Payson, Kaylee, and Emily start arguing until Emily interrupts them, reminds them that she's poor and has actual life issues. All you have to do is train. Do you know how much I wish that's all I had to worry about? The girls then make up and help Emily sneak out so that she can work her second shift. While Emily's at work, Lauren tells Payson and Kaylee that she lost her virginity at the kegger, but says that it's some random guy. Payson's reaction is so funny to me. You had sex with a guy you didn't even know? Yeah, so what? Lauren, how could you? I can't believe you had sex. Payson, please relax. It's okay. Payson then pledges to not have sex until she gets a gold medal or even after. Haley also confesses that she is actually dating Carter and Payson's about to have a literal conniption. To restore their bond, Payson gets Lauren and Kaylee to make up and apologize. I'm sorry that I told Marty about you and Carter. Yeah. And I'm sorry I lied to you. This scene just shows how much of a snake Lauren is because how are you gonna apologize and hug your best friend to her face? Like you literally didn't just sleep with her boyfriend the night before. It's giving Cassie. Also in this episode, Carter and Kaylee make up and Carter tells Lauren that he's sorry for what happened and sleeping with her was a mistake. Just what every single girl loves to hear. To save her pride, Lauren lies and says that it wasn't like it was her first time. And Carter also asks if Lauren saw his phone that she forgot at the party. And Lauren lies again and says that she does does not have it when it's literally in her pocket. Moral of the story, Lauren is a chronic liar. Finally, in this episode, Emily's mom lets it slip to Damon, remember Razor's bandmate that he has to cover for him at the pizza shack, that Emily's an elite gymnast at The Rock. Kaylee keeps pestering Lauren about what having sex is like, and Lauren tells her that her virginity was holding her back in every way. And now that she's had sex, she's a better gymnast. Girl. Please seek help. Where is the science behind that statement? Every single word that comes out of her mouth is just a lie. Kaylee tells Lauren that Carter's never pressured her to have relations. I need to stop saying that word before I get demonetized. And Lauren literally tells her it's because he doesn't see her that way. You're the type of girl guys want to marry, not the kind they want to have sex with. You guys. If you have a so-called friend who gives you these backhanded comments, please get rid of them. Chances are they may have slept with your boyfriend, just saying. The moms of the gym plus Summer, for whatever reason, realize that there's not enough money for the girls to go to nationals and they need a fundraiser. Against Mrs. Keeler's protest, the moms are gonna do a mother-daughter fashion show. It's giving pretty little liars, but whatever, I'm not mad at it. During practice, Sasha notices that Payson never smiles in her routines. Payson says, I'm about strength and power. You're looking for a girly girl. It's Kaylee. She's all about drive and all about power. She stays hungry. She devours. You heard it here first, guys. If you have ever smiled, you are a girly girl and are therefore not strong. Carter, you know, the lying liar that lies, has also been super paranoid because he keeps seeing Lauren and Kaylee whispering. So he asks Kaylee, Lauren lost her virginity the other night at that party. If you guys recall, Lauren told Carter that she had had relations before and now he knows that she is a liar. So honestly, the two belong together. Lauren is trying to figure out who she's gonna walk with for the mother-daughter fashion show since her mom is out of town doing relief work. Kaylee's seeing the fashion show as a way to make Carter see her as sexy, which prompts Lauren to ask Summer to walk the show with her, even though she literally said 0.5 seconds earlier. I'd rather choke on a tube sock than walk around with her. After practice, Carter gets in his car to find Lauren already sitting in it. If you want to be friends with benefits, you know where to find me. Who does this to their best friend? Who does this? Like, this is just, she is a snake through and through. I truly cannot stand her. 
In my opinion, Carter shouldn't be sleeping with any of these girls seeing as the legal age of consent in the state of Colorado is 17. And if this were a different show, we would have an entire case on our hands. You're a victim. Mm. Here we go, CSI. Oh, and also because this happens in the parking lot of The Rock, Summer saw Lauren kiss Carter in the car. Like she saw the whole thing. Summer doesn't tell Mr. Tanner what she saw, but she does tell him that he should have the talk with Lauren. And do you know what this man says? Mr. Tanner literally asked Summer, a girl that Lauren barely knows, if she can have the talk with her. Sir, are you not her father? Summer revealed to Lauren that she indulged in hoish behavior in high school. Summer is telling Lauren that you should be careful who you sleep with, don't just sleep with anyone, which is good advice especially for Lauren being a 16 year old girl. I completely agree on that advice. Lauren actually seems to be sympathetic and receptive to it. Talk does go astray though. Once I gave myself away, I lost something so important that would take me years to get back. What? My self respect. Is it okay for you to personally view virginity in that way? Yes, of course, but not everyone will view it the same way. And that's okay as well. There's beauty in both sides. I think in the end, this conversation only damages Lauren because she already had relations and now she thinks that she's worthless. So there's that. Before the fashion show, Payson's mom apologizes to Payson because she has accidentally taught her that femininity equals weakness and she never wanted to pass that down to Payson. And just like that, they're both ready to slay. Speaking of the fashion show, lots goes down. So after slaying the runway, Kaylee tells Lauren, I'm gonna ask Carter to sneak into my room tonight. Well, tonight's the night. What could go wrong with telling Lauren this information? Literally, like what could go wrong? Lauren then steals Emily's dress because she finds it to be cuter and she walks down the runway alone to impress Carter. Guys, I don't wanna say it, I really don't wanna say it, but she slayed, she did, she did slay in the dress, I'm sorry. So Lauren gets in trouble with her dad for stealing the dress and it comes out that Lauren's mom is not a girl boss doing relief work. Lauren's mother isn't a relief worker, she's an addict. Lauren is still on emotional high. She goes to Kaylee's mom, right? She goes to Mrs. Cruz and tells Kaylee's mom about Kaylee's plan. Something you should know. Carter's sneaking into Kaylee's room tonight and they're going to have sex. She won't listen to me, so I thought I'd better tell you. I'm sure you can tell Carter and Kaylee do not end up sleeping together because Miss Cruz talks to Kaylee and is like, girl, please don't do it. Do not do it. Finally, we are back to actual gymnastics. At practice, Emily lands this really hard move, the full and back out on bars, and Sasha is not having it. He says that she's not ready for the move and that she's not top 10 material at nationals quite yet. To better prepare for nationals and build more confidence, Sasha invites the Denver club, you know, which is the one Hot Marty, the old coach, now coaches at, to an invitational at the Rock. So this is a big deal because they're allegedly the two best clubs in the nation. How convenient that they're both located in the same state. Sasha tells the Rock that they can't lose. Hot Marty drops a bomb that the Denver club now has Kelly Parker, the best gymnast in the country, training with them. We will meet her later. Sasha catches Carter talking to both Lauren and Kaylee during practice and he tells him that he will ruin his career if he does not stay away from them. So, you know, love that for him. Lauren makes her dad promise to never marry Summer and he agrees. I need all of you to do this. You can't be 100% committed to her and me. And so, of course, Lauren also tells this information to Summer. Summer then confronts Mr. Tanner when it's just the two of them and he's afraid he's gonna lose her. So what does he do? He proposes to her. Will you marry me? The whole family is a mess. The entire family is a mess. Payson lands wrong after a vault and pinches her herniated disc. If you can even pinch that. She has pain in her herniated disc, however that works. And Payson wants a cortisone shot for her back. But her parents refuse because they only let her get one once every six months. Also, Kaylee hears her mom calling someone and leaving a saucy message. I know it sounds soppy, but I would give anything in the world to have your arms around me right now. And it turns out it's hot Marty. Can't bam her though, because that man, he's fine. And Kaylee is livid and she wants to tell her dad, but Miss Cruz essentially blackmails her. How could you cheat on him? You know, there's lots of things your father doesn't know about, like you and Carter. 
So we're just blackmailing our children now. Love that. It's cool. It's awesome. Carter shows up at Kaylee's house and she cries to him in his car. He gives her a promise necklace, which is actually very ugly. So Carter really just did not care about Sasha's warning. He really did not heed that at all. Now it is invitational day and the drama starts early. We finally get to meet Kelly Parker, the reigning US national champ. So let's officially welcome her to the board. If she looks familiar, it's because she was in Jones slash Jonas LA and in the very terrible and very forgettable Mean Girls 2. Payson and Kelly are literally about to tussle. They are like the main rivals. You know, I was so looking forward to kicking your ass at nationals, but now it's not going to be nearly as fun after I kick your ass here. The competition is great and The Rock is really killing it in both the individual and team spots. That is until Payson steps out of bounds on their final pass on floor. And if you guys don't know, stepping out of bounds is like a big deduction. And so then things just go downhill from there. Payson goes on to nail her vault, but she really hurts her back where her herniated disc is, I think, anatomy, whatever. She hurts her back and Sasha threatens to take her out of the competition. But then her mom lets her take a cortisone shot so she is ready to go. Payson nails her bar routine and ends up beating Kelly Parker out for first place in individual standing. So that is so fun. One thing about my girl Payson Keeler, she's gonna win. She's a winner. All the girls have to do now is not make any huge mistakes in their routines and their home free. And it is just Lauren and Emily left. Guys, this next part actually pisses me off. On her first round of bars, Emily purposely lets go of the bars just to get back at her dad for proposing to Summer. Now the pressure is really on for Emily. She tells Sasha she can land that hard move, but Sasha is like, no girly, just do what you're supposed to do. I told you not to do that move. Don't do it. Then there's a super dramatic shot of Emily on bars. He does the hard dismount that Sasha told her not to do because of course she does. <laughs> Sasha's face after she falls is priceless because he literally just stands there with his arms crossed, <laughs> glaring at her while she's actually a heap on the floor. Like I cringe every time at this scene. It is so embarrassing for her and Denver ends up winning the invitational because of it. Finally, Emily goes to apologize to Sasha and you know Sasha's pissed because he tells Emily, it'll never happen again, especially at nationals. So you're not going to nationals. Emily shows up at the rock the next day, ready to prove to Sasha that she can go to nationals. But Sasha is so pissed when he sees her. He tells her that he can't waste his time training athletes that don't listen and literally kicks her out of the rock for good. It's no longer a place for you here. You need to get your things and go now. Can I just? Goodbye, Emily. I was so surprised that he did this because it's one thing to like not let an athlete go to nationals and a whole other thing to be kicked out completely. So like Emily has no place to train. Also, I don't even know if Sasha has the authority to stop her from going to nationals seeing as in episode one, Emily's name was already sent to the national committee. Gymnastics girlies that are watching, please enlighten me on how this whole thing works in the comments. Lauren, of course, is super happy that Emily's out because that means she is back in the top three at the gym. And after practice, the rock girlies go and visit Emily at the pizza shack to see if she's okay and for those wondering at home she's obviously not anyways they're chatting it up when out of nowhere a guy comes in delivering beer who is the beer delivery man it's Payson's father Mr. Keeler everyone's gagged like the girls are gagged I'm gagged because this was such a random crossover what are you doing delivering beer nothing wrong with doing it but just did not expect to see you there. It turns out that Mr. Keeler lost his job a little bit ago. Miss Keeler is actually extremely pissed because he kept it a secret from her too. In other news, Kaylee shows Lauren the necklace that Carter got her and it later goes missing. Kaylee calls Lauren freaking out because she can't find it and Lauren hasn't seen it. Immediately after hanging up the phone, we see Lauren walking up to her vanity and putting on the necklace that Carter gave Kaylee. So she stole it. At this point, Lauren is a kleptomaniac and if this were a horror slash thriller, I would not be surprised if Lauren tried turning herself into Kaylee. Lauren sees the new necklace and compliments her, which actually makes Lauren happy. This episode, we also learn what Sasha thinks of the girls and their chances at nationals. I wonder if she's got the fire in her belly. Lauren is all fire, but I wonder if she can channel it to succeed at this level. And Payson, there's nothing stopping Payson. After being manipulated by Lauren, I told him I left it at home. It's just sad when a relationship has to be based off lies. I'm not judging, I'm just saying. 
Kaylee cries in her car about her lost necklace, which is where Summer finds her and comforts her. Miss Kometko tries to seduce Sasha into letting Emily back in the gym, which doesn't work. Who was surprised? I wasn't. Like, why would you do that? It's embarrassing for you and your child. We have to want more for ourselves. Mr. Keeler announces that he might be moving back to Minnesota. Payson actually tells them, surprise, I've signed with an agent and I can do sponsorships and we won't have to be broke anymore. How Payson signed with an agent without her parents' supervision, I don't know, but apparently a handshake is enough in the state of Colorado. Her parents say immediately no. You won't have to work at all. You just need to say yes. No. 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 In the end, her dad does end up moving to Minnesota, but don't worry, he will still be around. Meanwhile, with the help of Damon, the pizza shop guy, Emily has been sneaking into the rock at night and training. The next day, Emily dramatically storms into the gym. All eyes are on her and Sasha is looking at her like, literally, what are you doing here? She shows him that she has mastered the move. Sasha dies. Guys, Sasha calls her a dog. He calls her a dog. See, the dog is learned a new trick. I deserve a shot at nationals. I'm afraid I'm all out of little biscuits. You'll have to go without a treat. I would actually have to die at that point. I would have to. My lease on life, voided. After practice, Lauren pretends to find the necklace and she gives it back to Kaylee. Also, did I mention that Sasha lives in the trailer in the parking lot of The Rock? Because <laughs> he does. Lauren literally begs him for another chance. And during a one-on-one -on -one session, Emily cries about her daddy issues and her need to be in control. Do you know what my life would be like if I wasn't in control? You're just gonna leave us like everyone else. Like who? My dad. Sasha is actually surprisingly nice about it considering he did call her a dog earlier in the episode and he promises that he won't leave her or the gym which is surprising to me because literally every two seconds he seems to be threatening to leave but okay change of heart. The scene is actually cute because they bond as coaches and athletes and Emily's back to going to nationals. Buckle up because episode 8 is a big one. Sasha changes Emily's floor routine because he hates the music that Emily chose so now Emily has to stay late all week to learn a new choreo which is bad because bills are piling up at home and she's supposed to work at the pizza shack all week. While Payson was showing Sasha her routine, she pinched her herniated disc again or hurt it, however that works. So Sasha makes her sit out the rest of practice and the following day's practice. This brings us to Payson talking to a new character. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nikki Russo to the board. He's described as the female Payson, which I'm guessing means that he is the top gymnast at The Rock. Payson's pissed because her mom won't let her have another cortisone shot, but Nikki's dad happens to be an orthopedic surgeon. My dad. He's an orthopedic surgeon. I can score it for you. The only if you need it. Lauren's been trying for weeks to break up Kaylee and Carter, and she finds out that if Kaylee's dad ever found out about Kaylee and Carter, then it would be the end of them. As insane as Lauren is, she can be pretty funny at times. I mean, this is how she reacted to Summer asking her to be her maid of honor. Oh my gosh, I'm so touched. Really? No. Get real. Payson finds out that Sasha is still determining Team Brink for Nationals and is getting worried because she doesn't want to sit out for long. So she ends up asking Nikki Russo for the cortisone. The cortisone costs $100 and goes to her mom claiming that she needs a new dress for the Nationals going away party, which is that night at the Cruz's house. But really, she's using the money to buy the drugs. Also would like to note that cortisone is completely legal in gymnastics. However, Payson is hiding this information from her parents because they're extremely strict about how much she can have in a certain amount of time. Summer tells Lauren that she's breaking off her engagement with Mr. Tanner because Lauren's actually been terrible. Later at the party, Mr. Cruz pulls Lauren aside to show her the pre-Nationals gift he got Kaylee. He um, took the diamonds out of his World Series ring because remember he used to be a professional baseball player and he put it in a necklace for Kaylee and Lauren advises that he give it to her during the party. Manipulative Snake is on a mission. She takes Carter's phone, remember that she still has that, and puts the phone in the cruise's closet near a familiar red box before I leave the room. Sasha tells Payson that he's ranking her number one on the Nationals roster and he thinks that she can be the all-around champ but only if she can stay focused and manage her pain. This really pushed her to go through with a cortisone deal with Nikki but Nikki refuses to accept her money but he does give the cortisone to her for free since he likes her. Lauren notices that Mr. Cruz has gone to get Kaylee's gift which is in that familiar red box and quickly asks Kaylee if she can use her phone to call 
call her dad because apparently Lauren's phone is dead. We all know that girl's phone is not dead. She is just up to something. Anyway, she uses Kaylee's phone to call Carter and unfortunately when it rings, Mr. Cruz is nearby and sees the photo of the two of them kissing on Carter's phone. Yikes. One thing about Lauren is that she's going to scheme and she's going to destroy everything in the process. Like that girl does not care about you. Mr. Cruz comes storming back into the party and demands to know what's going on between them. I love him. Love. How could you sneak around behind my back and, and, and risk everything? Carter, the town idiot, comes in and starts defending Kaylee and Mr. Cruz says, keep my daughter's name out of your mouth. Then things really escalate and quickly because before you know it, Carter is punching Mr. Cruz. Yes, punching. Hey, listen, don't punch me. And keep in mind that everyone from the gym is at this party and is watching. The entire scene is radiating Will Smith at the 2022 Oscars. Also, side note, but congratulations to Will Smith for winning his first Oscar for Best Actor. I feel like we kind of gloss over at that. Kaylee tells Carter to leave and Lauren catches up with Carter. Carter finally grows some brain cells and tells her that he knows that it was Lauren who set them up. Like, he knows. And um, she tells him, No, I love you. You're a liar. You're pathetic. I will never be with you. Was it harsh? Yes. Was it also true? Definitely yes. Also, there's been some developments with Damon and Emily. You will learn throughout this video, I really just don't care about them as a couple, but I guess for the sake of being fair, I'll give you an update. Emily told Damon, maybe I actually do like you, but then Damon's like, oh, I like you too, but we can't be together because you need to focus on your career. Plus, surprise, I'm moving to LA because I sold my songs to a producer. Someone's anonymously told Sasha that Carter's been dating a girl at The Rock, but Sasha Source wouldn't tell him who. The boy involved, Carter Anderson, is now suspended from The Rock and he won't be going to nationals. Everyone is so shocked. I don't know why when every two seconds Sasha was literally reminding them that they were not allowed to date. Sasha's actually ranked Lauren first on theme because now they have the same degree of difficulty. Harder a move is that a gymnast can master the more points that they can get based on that hard move. An interesting turn of events. Summer finds out where Lauren's mom is and Lauren overhears the conversation. So after talking with her dad, Lauren then gets her biological mom mom's number and her mom is officially coming to watch her at nationals which is very exciting for lauren kaylee sneaks out during practice to see carter and this girl is so down bad y'all that she is ready to throw away her whole career for him she wants the two of them to run away together and tells him that she doesn't care about gymnastics that's when carter finally tells her i had sex with someone Lauren's mom is a no-show at the station when Lauren goes to pick her up. So Lauren lies and tells everyone that her mom got sent back to do relief work. And now Kaylee has gone missing. But the girls figure out that she's at the gymnastics camp that they used to go to. And unfortunately for them, it's three hours away. This is especially bad because they're supposed to be getting extra hours of sleep because they have nationals coming up in a few days. When they finally find Kaylee, she puts two and two together and finds out that it was Lauren who slept with Carter. It was you, the guy at the party you lost your virginity to. It was Carter? I'm sorry. I was drinking and it was my birthday and I was really upset. So you slept with my boyfriend? Kaylee tries to leave again, but Emily takes her keys and throws them into the nearby water because they need to figure things out and go to nationals as a team. Lauren throws her keys in the water too. This scene reminds me of that one New Girl episode where they keep throwing the keys, if you know you know. Lauren keeps crying, but I'm sorry, I just don't feel bad for her. I can't feel bad for you. And I get why Payson in particular is pissed off because she truly just wants to get some rest. But I don't know why people aren't understanding that Kaylee needs time to process information before making up with Lauren. Like she literally just learned that her boyfriend and her best friend hooked up behind her back. And Kaylee says that she is never going to forgive Lauren. And honestly, I get that. Every secret so far comes out this episode. Kaylee outs that Lauren and her dad are the reason why Marty left. Why would my dad blackmail Marty? Because Marty was sleeping with my mom. If it's any consolation, my mom's a drug addict. Payson admits to everyone that she bought cortisone illegally, but she doesn't say from who. And Payson starts crying because she just feels scared and feels alone because everyone has secret. And one by one, they make up. We are so much more than just friends. We're a team. I really need you guys. And Emily carves her name into this tree stump that 
the girls did when they were much younger, which I feel like really solidified Emily joining the crew. And you might be asking, what does Emily carve her name into the trunk with? Well, she carves it in with Kaylee's keys that she only pretended to throw away. Very much new girl. At the end of the episode, Kaylee tells Lauren that she will be her teammate, but she will never be her friend. You guys, it's finally the big day, the day we've all been waiting for. It's nationals and the rock girlies are in Boston. I've decided that I like the name Rockets and I am going to sometimes refer to them as the Rockets. And the rock girlies, every time I say that, it refers to Payson, Emily, Lauren, and Kaylee. Here's the scoop. Here's a lowdown. The main attraction, the one that everyone in the country is really gonna be looking at, is Kelly Parker, the national reigning champ versus Payson Keeler, the girl who beat Kelly Parker during invitationals at The Rock. You beat Kelly for the very first time last week in Boulder. What was the key that unlocked the win? Being better. But the pressure is on for everyone. Again, this probably isn't 100% as to how elite gymnastics works, but it is really important to place high in nationals because that determines who makes it onto the US national team, which gets us one step closer to the Olympics. That is the lore in the make or break it world. That's how it works here. Contact Freeform if you have any bones to pick. Things are looking too good for the Rockets. Payson feels really guilty for buying the cortisone behind her mom's back. She hasn't used it yet, but she is feeling extremely guilty. And Emily is an absolute wreck. She is feeling major imposter syndrome and keeps getting flashbacks of every single fall she's had in her gymnastics career. Like it's really bad. Kaylee has to deal with Carter's idiotic self because he literally shows up to Boston. She has like one of the biggest nights of her career and he is here trying to make it about him. Someone escort him out of the building. I'm so proud of Kaylee though because in this moment she finally tells him off and breaks up with him for good. Everybody is so quick to tell me what they need me to do. What about what I need? Of course yes tell me. I need to be alone. Lauren is just sad because her mom isn't there and so there's two full days of competition and for getting out there Sasha gives them this lovely pet talk he's actually quite good at them and then the girlies go out and they absolutely bomb day one Emily can't control her nerves Lauren looks angry in every event she does and according to the judges Kaylee has sort of plateaued in her career and she doesn't really seem to want it enough my girl Payson though she is on Fire. She's that girl. It turns out Nicki Minaj wrote Girl on Fire not for Gabby Douglas, but she wrote it for Payson Keeler. Whoa, this just in. So anyways, Payson is killing every event, but Kelly Parker is just as good. And Kelly ends up narrowly taking the lead by the end of day one. Payson ends up getting second place by the end of day one, and Emily does so bad that she ends up in 20th. If she wants to make it onto the national team, she's got a lot of catching up to do. Summer calls Lauren's mom to yell at her for not showing up for her daughter, but then she finds out some tea. It turns out that Mr. Tanner actually called Lauren's mom after Lauren did and told her to stay away from his daughter. This drives Summer to pack up her things and leave. Honestly, I understand where Lauren gets her behavior from because her dad is just as manipulative. As much as I don't care for Damon, he is really sweet. He took Brian. Oh yeah, I forgot to introduce you guys to Brian. Brian is Emily's half brother. The only thing we get to know about him is that he is in a wheelchair. We never find out why. We never find out any of his hobbies, his interests. He is just there. Anyways, Damon took Brian and they show up to Boston to support her. And this is really great because it really lifts Emily's spirit because she really needed that boost of like self-esteem. Kaylee finds out that her dad doesn't even think she can win. The goal is to do well enough, not to win. See, of course I want you to win, but we have to think realistically. He just wants her to be good enough to get more sponsorships. And Kaylee ends up firing her dad as her manager because she needs to do what's best for her. Then she goes out on day two and she absolutely kills it. Lauren's day two doesn't start off that well. Her performance is solid, but she's still sad that Summer left because Summer said that she would never leave them. And apparently overnight, Lauren grew to like Summer. I'm here. Look up. I am right here. Now you go out there and you show them what you've got. With the mother figure that she suddenly doesn't hate back in her life, Lauren goes out and she places first on beam. So go girl. Then it's time for Payson's bar routine. If she nails this, she could be the all around national champ. It's also important to note that Payson was about to take the cortisone earlier, but decided against it because she doesn't want to rely on drugs. Very dare of her. Love that for her. She starts out her routine on bars and then she just...
I was in shock. Everyone freaks out because she's not getting up. She's literally knocked unconscious and gets rolled out in a stretcher. Literally, why Payson? She did not deserve this. Y'all couldn't have let this happen to Lauren. Payson gets told at the hospital, she gets told that she has a back fracture, but there's no nerve damage. So her parents are super relieved. Payson also gets told- If you do gymnastics, you may never walk again. No, it can't be over now. Since Payson's out of the competition, everyone thinks that Kelly Parker's got it in the bag. But surprisingly, Kaylee's been doing so well all day that she could actually win. After executing her floor routine, the results are in. Holy cow! By the slimmest of margins, Kaylee Cruz is the new national all-around gymnastics champion. Who saw that coming? Literally no one. We love that for her. Very girl boss, very slay. The rest of the national gymnastics team is announced. Lauren places fourth and makes it as well. And Emily gets the last spot on the team too. And that folks is our mid season finale. I just really can't believe that they took Payson out like that. Like she did not deserve it. So we get an update on Payson. She is out of the hospital and is waking up and walking again with crutches. And she also has to wear a full on neck and back brace, but overall health wise, she is doing great. Payson's parents are worried though, because Payson keeps saying that everything is fine and she isn't even angry to super out of character for Payson. Lauren is extremely jealous of all the attention that Kaylee's been getting from being named national champion. Our teammate and friend, Payson Keeler, should be standing here right now. Right. And we also find out that Nikki Russo, the guy who gave Payson cortisone, plays silver in the men's competition. While visiting Payson, Nikki tells Payson that he forged his dad's signature on the prescription, which is a felony. So he feels really bad. But Payson that no one knows. She tells him to get the last vial in her locker, which is at the rock. But surprise, someone came over to visit Payson and was listening to the entire conversation. Can we guess who? Honestly, if you didn't guess Lauren, have you been paying attention? In this episode, Kaylee finally comes to visit Payson, which is something that she's been avoiding doing because she thinks that her winning was a fluke and Kaylee actually feels really guilty about it. It should have been you, Payson. You should have won national and not me. And every day I wonder, did I deserve it? You know? And everyone's expecting me to do it again. I would like to disagree, but let's not pretend that Kaylee would have won had Payson still been in the running. Kaylee keeps complaining to Payson, who's like, girl, I literally had bigger problems. Like my back is broken. She is still suppressing a lot of her emotions. Eventually, Payson snaps in the middle of the night and she starts going ham on all of her trophies. Uh. And this actually helps Payson a lot. And her and Kaylee finally talk it out. She's gone through a lot and I'm proud of her for how honest she is and how she's handling things. I was gonna be the national champion. I was gonna be the winner. And then, and then you took that too. And, and now I'll just, I'll never know. In other news, Emily and Damon are officially together, even though he's literally moving to LA. So neither of them have time for this, but you know, whatever. Also, Razor is back in town. Remember him? He's the OG pizza shack guy, and he's not too happy that Damon and Emily are together, seeing as the one thing he told Damon to do was to not get with Emily. And that's exactly what they did. But you know, you snooze, you lose. I wish I cared about Emily's relationship, but I really don't like date him, don't date him. At the end of the day, who cares? Okay, so you guys, Remember the vibe that Payson said was in Walker? Yeah, so Nikki goes to check it and it is not there anymore. That is because Lauren has it now and she is blackmailing him, but we don't know what she wants yet. Isn't Lauren just a joy? Like she is a joy to every person in the show. At every corner, she's always wreaking havoc on someone. There's something a little bit poetic about that. It's a big day at The Rock because The Rock has been chosen to be the official home gym of the national gymnastics team for women, which means that once a month, the national team practices will be held there. And it is also a really big day because they're going to announce who the official coach of the national gymnastics team will be. Everyone knows that Sasha's favorite to be selective. He is a head coach of The Rock, so it would just make sense to make him coach of the national team since practices will be held there and also he has the most amount of girls on the national team with Kaylee, Lauren, and Emily being on it. There is a bunch of press at the rock for the announcement and even Kelly Parker and a few of the other members of the national team come. Having your own coach is a huge advantage. He decides which girls go to all the big meets and don't you forget it. <laughs> However, it is announced that Hot Marty, head coach of the Denver Elite Club, which is a club that Kelly Parker trains at, will be the head coach of the national team and the girlies are shook. 
Kaylee, Lauren, and Emily come up with a scheme to try to get rid of him by showing that he's a horrible coach and by making him look bad in front of the national committee, but this does not go well for them. Because of their behavior, Pot Marty and the national committee decide that Kaylee, Lauren, and Emily are not fit to go to the upcoming meet in London. Kaylee's pissed because she's a national champ, so automatically she should have been selected to go. We also get to the bottom of why Sasha wasn't chosen as a national team coach. Payson, his star gymnast broke her back in front of the whole world. They could never pick Sasha after that. Meanwhile, Kaylee Cruz has entered her first reputation era of the show because she is tired of not getting what she wants. She is in fact a first class radio rebel. She calls up Carter and she has a breakdown to him in her car. Seems to be a recurring theme for them. Then she tries to hook up with him and he's like, girl, like you're not in a good state of mind. I think this is the only smart thing Carter's ever done. And Kaylee actually throws him out of the car. So yeah, it was a very awkward scene for everyone involved. But Kaylee is still pissed and she decides that she is going to go rogue. I'm telling my father about your family. What about me? Why do I always have to keep everybody else's secrets? Someone please stop this girl before she blows her entire life up. Sasha tells Payson that she needs to talk some sense into her team members because they're gonna get themselves kicked off the national team if they keep behaving like this. And that is exactly what Payson does because she is a girl boss queen legend that slays. Kaylee does reveal that she hasn't told her father because she just can't bear to mess up her family. This puts an end to Kaylee's reputation era. She enters them often during the season. However, they're always short-lived. At the end of the episode, Payson tells her mom that she's gonna be the national champ next year and y'all the face her mom makes i'm literally screaming because she's like girl you're back are you sure sasha gave payson a book to motivate her during her recovery but payson being payson is now taking it way too far and is fully convinced that she will have a full recovery and will get back to gymnastics and her parents are like girl please be serious. Also, Nikki Russo didn't help the situation either because he gives Payson the name of the best back doctor in UCLA and says that his dad actually put in a call for her because remember, his dad is a doctor. Conveniently enough, Kaylee invites Payson and Emily on an all expenses trip paid to attend a party in LA courtesy of her being the national champion. So she gets sent to these cool places. Lauren also manages to worm her way into the trip when she finds out that Nikki Russo is attending. I have a vial of cortisone that you were illegally handing yeah. Now, compared to taking that buff little bod to prison, is taking me to a little party really that bad? After practice, Lauren finds out that Carter is living in his car because I don't know, like he is. I would say that's what he gets for cheating on Kaylee, but I won't say that because no one deserves homelessness. And Lauren happily jumps on the opportunity to take him in and she lets him sleep in the empty room above her garage, which she claims that no one ever goes into. And Carter promises to be out by the time that Lauren gets back from LA. The Rockettes minus Lauren are thrilled to be in LA for a drama-free weekend. The girlies are living their best lives. Lauren shows up on the arm of Nikki Russo like a surprise Coachella guest performer, except no one cheered. And this annoys everyone, especially Payson and Kaylee. It annoys Kaylee because she purposely didn't invite Lauren, yet she still showed up. And it also annoyed Payson because her and Nikki have like a thing going on and it looks like he's sort of dating Lauren now. Also, Damon shows up at the party. You know, he's Emily's boyfriend. All you guys need to know is Damon is jealous and insecure about dating a successful woman like Emily. He's a songwriter and he's complaining to Emily that this huge girl group wants his song, but he doesn't want to sell it to them because they're mainstream. Sir, you have to get over yourself. It's like saying like the biggest girl group in the world, like Blackpink. Blackpink wanted your song and you send no to them because they're popular. Like, are you okay? Are you mentally stable? Speaking of Blackpink, girlies, we need to come back. It's been too long. YG Entertainment, please report to the front. We need the music. Blackpink seems to be in every area except the studio. So let's change that back to the regularly scheduled program. Emily has to literally baby Damon and tell him that he's special and he's loved in his own unique way. And the two realize that although they really like each other, they need to focus on their careers for the moment and they take a break. Literally everyone cheered. Anyways, in this episode, Kaylee and Lauren finally make up after Lauren saves a drunk Kaylee from being photographed by the paparazzi with some MJ, you know, the drug, not the Spider-Man character. Kaylee thanks Lauren and the two decide to be friends again but on one condition. Just don't have anything to do with Carter. I promise to have nothing to do with Carter. 
he's currently sleeping in her house. Remember, like she is giving him a place to stay. She just lips a lie, honestly. Like some people like me lip to slay, but Lauren, that girl lips a lie. And honestly, Lauren would have fit perfectly into the PLO universe. And I stand by that. Like she would have thrived in that environment. In other news, Payson and Nikki finally kiss after he encourages her about her upcoming doctor's appointment. Payson goes into the appointment with her mom, super optimistic that she can get back into the gymnastics. But unfortunately, she's told once more that her condition is inoperable and she is just crushed. Completely forgot to mention too, just a tiny little detail. Miss Kometko and Mr. Tanner end up accidentally going on a date due to the wonders of online dating. It doesn't horribly go wrong and he helps her buy a new car, which is clearly a Kia ad. We love a sugar daddy era, go her. Lauren gets back from LA and finds Carter still at her house and she lets him stay. The two of them agree that Kaylee can never find out. Payson is still in her depression era, so her parents send her to high school um, because school fixes all problems and she is not thrilled. Immediately she meets this guy who I can only describe as a variant of Jughead Jones. Bobbleheads concerned with stickers, jocks, and what to wear to the next school sponsored social event. You seem independent of that superficial stuff. Ike Benziger and he is strange. He's not like other boys. I'm living for Payson's high school era because while she does get bullied, her bully is this iconic brown girl named Morgan Webster. And the show is so sparse with people of color that I have no choices support every single one of them. This episode holds one of the most slay moments of the entire show. It is giving second episode random cartwheeling aggressive tumbling vibes you know and it's giving what we need. So Morgan and the cheerleader girlies find out that Payson used to be an elite gymnast and tell Payson that she should show them how to tumble since she claims to know what she's talking about. Payson's obviously in a back brace so she literally can't but out of nowhere Kaylee and Lauren show up. A round off back handspring. That, that sounds really hard. It's not as hard as a round off back handspring layout step out. And ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a tumble off. Ugh, the girly slayed. The rock girly slayed. Like, I can't lie. I now understand the random urge to flip everywhere. Because if I were an elite gymnast, I would do the same. If you were on the 2012 US Olympic team and onward, so that's 2012 through just a recent one we just had. Comment down below if you've ever had a tumble off with strangers or if you've ever watched Make It or Break It. Thank you. We have made it to episode 15 and I promise you it only gets crazier from here. There is going to be a party at The Rock for Valentine's Day organized by Summer. Summer is like the manager of the gym at the moment. It used to be Payson's mom but she's taking a step back to take care of Payson so that's why Summer's always around. So she's organizing a Valentine's Day party so that she can give everyone a talk about abstinence. You guys, I think that ABC family was going through something because they had The Secret Lives of American Teenager airing at the same time. I had sex and now dad is dead. And he had a horrible death because I had incredible sex. Teaching teens actual sexual education beyond abstinence is also extremely important. Okay, getting off of my public health soapbox. Lauren is on not just one mission, but two. The girls book them busy. First is to get her father and Summer back together, even though she doesn't know that her father and Miss Kometko are kind of dating. She also wants to set up Kaylee and Nikki so that Carter will be there for the taking. This girl is sleeping in Carter's clothes. She is down bad. Somebody please sound the alarms. Razor sings Emily the this terrible song. He's the original Pizza Shack guy. It's really confusing because there's two Pizza Shack guys and they're both white with brown hair. You blink and they just switch places. Like it's crazy. You would think that they're like fraternal twins or something or like variants. See your name is Emily. If I had to hear it, you had to hear some of it too. Emily's trying to get a hold of Damon, but he's been ignoring her. And Damon does eventually call Razor, but it's to tell him that he's literally in jail. He is in his incarceration era. He was trying to buy some music equipment, but it was stolen. He didn't know that and he got arrested. Personally, I don't care. On the brighter side, Payson realizes that there is more to life than gymnastics. I thought my choice was gymnastics or nothing, but it's gymnastics or everything else. This is such like a big personal growth moment for Payson. I love her. Payson has a sleepover with her rock friends and a friend from school. And it's just really wholesome to see how she's moving on with her life. Nikki Russo decides that he's going to go to Denver to train because he's been recruited. And he says that there's a lot of drama at The Rock. So everyone say your goodbyes to Nikki. What a joy it's been to have him. I'm being sarcastic. He barely added anything to the show. Emily finds out about Damon being in jail and keeping it from her. And so she breaks up with him for good. 
Yes. Heartbreak on Valentine's Day. Yes. Carter is chilling in the room above Lauren's garage where he hides and lives like a little mouse, like a little mouse rat. He hears voices coming. He quickly hides in the closet, but he does hear Mr. Tanner and a date canoodling. And it's Miss Kometko. We know that, but he doesn't know that. And he's actually lucky that he can't see because I'm actually traumatized. Anyways, the sleepover at Payson's house is going great when Miss Keeler gets a call from Sasha. She heard about Payson's case and she's developed a new procedure that could fix Payson's back. He tells her that there's a surgeon in Europe that believes that they can fix Payson's back and get her back into gymnastics. And Payson's mom does not love this information. Next morning, Lauren finds Carter coming out of his hiding spot from the night before. And this is what she says. Let me guess, gay pride celebration? What? You, coming out of the closet? I have no word. Payson's parents, seeing how happy she is, really become torn about even telling Payson about a surgery that might not work. In the end, they decide not to tell her because they just don't want to get her hopes up or just risk anything. It's prom at Payson's school. It's prom season, guys. Get your corsages and whatever, bow ties and such. And Payson's school friend, whose name I can't remember, I feel kind of bad because she's actually a sweet girl, invites Payson and the rock girlies to prom Fine, we'll go to prom. We're going to prom! And so they decide to go because they've never been to prom because they're homeschooled and their whole lives are gymnastics. Lauren begs her dad for a $600 dress to buy the prom. And he says no because she literally has two closets full of clothes. Then two seconds later, he offers his personal shopper to Miss Kometko so that Emily can buy a new dress for prom. And Emily has no idea about this, by the way. The personal shopper leaves a dress in Mr. Tanner's car. I promise that this is important information. But before Mr. Tanner can get the dress to Emily's mom, Lauren finds the dress in her her dad's car and thinks that her dad is going to surprise her with it so she pretends that she doesn't know about it. Mr. Tanner eventually does give the dress to Miss Kometko and Emily wears the dress to prom. When Lauren sees Emily in the dress at prom she freaks out. My dad is dating Emily Kometko. What? It's crazy. Yeah. She's wearing the dress. Why her mind goes there immediately I have no idea. I feel like that says a lot about her dad if that's the first place that her mind jumps off to but hey none of my business. Lauren finally gets some common sense and she realizes that her her dad is dating Emily's mom, which she finds even worse. At prom, Carter tells Kaylee that he is done waiting for her if she can't forgive him. And then God, this episode has so much Damon and Emily drama. I'm in actual agony. I won't burden you with their super drama. But just know that they both love each other, but refuse to tell each other. And Payson's parents feel really guilty. And after prom, they sit her down and they decide to tell her the news about the surgery. So this big one, so listen up, we got a lot to get through. Remember how Emily, Kaylee, and Lauren weren't selected for the meet in London since they spread those rumors about Hot Marty? Well, that meet happened and Kelly Parker and the girls who did get selected for the national team to represent them in China took home the gold. This is actually very bad for the rock girlies. At the national team practice tomorrow, you don't just have to perform, you have to prove that they need you to beat China. Your shot at going to the Olympics all depend on going to this meet. Payson and their parents have the meeting with the doctor who says that she can fix Payson's back and Payson's super excited about it. However, her mom is just not having it. At home, after hearing her parents fight about the surgery and the risk, Payson tells her parents that she no longer wants to have it because of the risks. So what's up with Lauren, you ask? Well, since discovering that her dad is dating Emily's mom, she's obviously been scheming to break them up and she keeps dropping hints at Emily about her mom's relationship to see if Emily has any idea, but Emily clearly doesn't. Did you ever get the story behind your designer prom dress? I told you my mom's boyfriend bought it. Has he bought you anything else? Diamond studs, tennis bracelets. Okay, y'all, walk with me because the next few things that happen happen back to back. It's just a big mess. Secrets are coming out left and right and it's giving circus by Britney Spears. At the practice for the national gymnastics team, Lauren and Emily are talking in the bathroom about how it must suck to be Kaylee having to train with the man who slept with her mother, i.e. Aunt Marty. The girls head back out onto the floor, but they make a crucial mistake of not checking to see if the bathroom was empty because Kelly Parker, of all people, was listening and she got all the tea. Now it's time for Kaylee to show Marty her floor routine, which includes her double Arabian, which she just recently nailed. But before she can, Kelly Parker psychs her out with what she heard. And when Kaylee tries to deny it, Kelly's like, nah, girl, I literally heard this information directly from your bestie. Kaylee is literally psyched out in her head and she bombs landing the double Arabian. And that's when Hot Marty tells her, I'm literally just gonna have you take out that move. And Kaylee immediately objects. Also, I forgot to explain. So this first day of practice is just like 
them showing Hot Marty like what they've got. And then the second day of practice is the really big day where the entire national committee is going to come and watch what they have. And then that second day, they're going to select the members. Hot Marty tells Kaylee that she needs to trust him. And she says, trust you, trust the man who had an affair with my mom. How am I supposed to do that? Y'all, when she said that my jaw was on the ground, I cannot believe she actually did that. Kaylee literally gets in her car and drives off. So we move to the parking lot of The Rock where Mr. Tanner and Ms. Kometko are talking on the phone. I've got to tell Emily about us before Lauren does. I, I, I... Uh oh. What? I am living for this chaos. So furious, Emily runs back inside and she is ready to fight Lauren because she kept hinting at their relationship but never said anything. Lauren reveals that she was only hinting at it because she thought Emily was trying to hide it so that they could keep mooching off of her rich dad. Lauren then calls Emily's mom and I quote, a trashy hoochie mama who can't keep her boobs covered. And the girls immediately start swinging until Hot Marty has to break them up. Poor Sasha sees Kaylee drive off and is so lost as to what's happening. He thinks all this drama is still about how Hot Marty left them for Denver, but Summer fills him in on Hot Marty being a homewrecker. And you guys, what happens next, I can't make up. Sasha storms back into the rock, walks up to Hot Marty, and just decks him right in the face. I thought you said the girls were gonna have it together. That's what happened at practice. Miss Cruz hears about what happened at practice and finally decides to tell her husband the truth. Girly, it is about time, like the entire state of Colorado knew before he did. Sasha then calls a last minute meeting with the Rockets and apologizes for setting a bad example. He tells them that him and Hot Marty talked and they decide to keep the events of the practice private. And at tomorrow's practice, the national committee will be looking at them objectively. Payson's parents finally decide to let her have a surgery and just like that, Payson goes under. It's giving Grey's Anatomy. At the next day's practice, the National Committee are present and the Rock girlies slay the practice, all of them do, and Kaylee even nails her double Arabian. The results are in and it's time to see the six girls that get a go to compete against China. A bunch of filler names are called and then Kelly Parker gets selected, Lauren gets selected, and then more filler names. Somehow, Kaylee and Emily do not get selected to go to the meet in China. This literally makes zero sense to me because in what world would they not take their reigning national champ Kaylee to these big competitions and also she has the highest degree of difficulty on the whole national gymnastics team so it's not adding up. Sasha knows something's up and he confronts the committee. There is one committee member who is a literal worst. Her name is Ellen Beals. She's actually evil. My girls are better than some of the girls in your supposed dream team. Your girls are inconsistent in performance and attitude. She knows everything. She knows all their secrets. The committee tells him that they're putting their money behind Kelly Parker because she can be kept in line and his rock girls are just out of control. The episode ends with Sasha entering his reputation era. I think we're renegades now. They haven't seen anything yet. Episode 18 starts off with a month time jump. Kaylee's dad, since finding out about the news, has moved out and Kaylee is not having it. So Kaylee's life sucks at the moment. But in other news, Payson's back. Her miraculous surgery went unbelievably well and she's already running a seven minute mile. I love the magic of unbelievable screenwriting. Emphasis on unbelievable. Sasha tells everyone that China is coming to the rock for an invitational meet. Essentially, the gymnastics Classics committee hasn't approved it and it is not a sanctioned event, but Sasha is going to go over their heads. But like I said, he's in his reputation era, so he does not care whatsoever. Payson finally gets the green light to start training again from her physical therapist. How about tomorrow? Really? Tomorrow? I want you to take it easy though. A level skills for the first week. And at first she's really excited, but then she gets scared that she won't be able to do what she used to do. So she tells her mom that she still hasn't been approved. Sasha gets a call from Ellen Beals and gets yelled at for going above their heads, but China officially accepts their invitation. So Sasha's like, I do not care. Kaylee officially decides to forgive her mom for cheating. Kaylee and Carter just somehow end up kissing. I don't know. Miss Keeler gets a voice message from Payson's PT asking how a training's been going since he approved her for training over a week ago. Cut to Payson at the gym after hours. She's terrified of the bars and she can't bring herself to do it.
Lauren's back from China, because remember she was the only one selected to go, but she's pretty bummed that she placed last on beam, which is something that she's never done before. The Rock girlies are in lockdown at the gym because according to Sasha, that's the way that they do it in China. They are plucked from their homes, sent away, locked in a camp. They live, breathe, eat, and sleep gymnastics. The way they talk about the Chinese gymnasts in the show is weird. They're often referred to as robots and machines. And I don't know, something about it makes me feel uncomfortable. Haley and Lauren really bond during the lockdown and they promise to never let a guy come between them again. Keep in mind, Carter is still living in Lauren's house unbeknownst to Kaylee, so best friend of the year award obviously goes to Lauren. Miss Keeler tells Sasha that Payson's been approved to train, but Sasha's super surprised because he obviously hasn't seen Payson training. Carter tells Lauren that him and Kaylee are back together. I mean, all you guys did was kiss, but you know, whatever. They're back together and lauren feels betrayed because they both swore off boys getting between them Haley's manager slash pr person i guess they're the same role in this show tells her that she should drop out of the invitational against china you're the national champion sure you didn't go to china but you still have your title not to mention partnerships and endorsements that could all be lost do any of those girls have that also in this episode miss cruz gets her divorce papers come on divorce era love that and she shot cheated on your husband some people are gonna divorce you and you know that's that's what happens let's not be done here while helping Emily with a move, Payson confesses that she is actually really terrified. She hasn't been able to do any sort of gymnastics. It's like there's this invisible wall between me and every apparatus in this gym. With Emily's encouragement, she's able to do a simple vault unbeknownst to Payson. Her mom and Sasha were both watching. It's just so great to see Payson have a win. Kaylee's been really conflicted because there's a bunch of people telling her that if she competes, her career will tank. And Sasha visits Kaylee at her house and tells her that her team needs their leader and that's her. This in mind, Kaylee decides that she will be there. She's going to risk it and compete. You go girly. Ellen Beals, you know, the gremlin from the national committee, tells Sasha that they're gonna start coming after Emily because they found out that she has a job at the pizza shop. You might be asking, oh, what's the big deal? And to that I say, this is a huge deal because having a job is a direct violation of one of the guidelines of the scholarship that Emily just so happens to be a recipient of. A scholarship is the only reason she can even afford to train at The Rock. It also helps fund her family since Miss Kometko doesn't make much. Ellen tells Sasha that if Emily competes in the Invitational against China, they will pull her entire scholarship. That girl's gonna be broke. And it's really sad. Sasha visits Emily at work and Emily is literally quaking in her boots that Sasha has caught her. And Sasha is pissed mostly just because Emily lied to him. You are in really big trouble with me, but worse right now, you are in really big trouble with the National Committee. They know about your little hobby making pizzas and they're threatening to pull your scholarship. She really might have just blown her only chance at going to the Olympics. Emily decides that she's still going to compete in the Invitational because she just refuses to let her team or herself down. Back to Kaylee, she calls Lauren scared because apparently Ellen Beals called her personally to intimidate her and she really needs a friend. Lauren doesn't pick up so Kaylee decides to drive over to Lauren's house. Meanwhile, Lauren's in the room of the garage with Carter the rat loser and Lauren tells him that she loves him but she says that it's time to let him go. Lauren says that she genuinely wishes Carter and Kaylee happiness which is sweet but it is about time. Unfortunately for them, Mr. Tanner has directed Kaylee to the room above the garage since he knows that Lauren spends so much time up there and Kaylee walks in on the two of them yeah it's yeah there's literally no coming back for this for lauren that girl has lied over and over again through her teeth and she was finally caught with carter i don't feel bad i really don't we don't know kaylee's reaction because this episode ends off on a cliffhanger ladies and gentlemen rockers and rockets we have Finally made it to episode 20, the season finale of Make It or Break It. Wow, okay, let's jump in. Haley has decided to pull out of the meat. She's like, you guys are all disgusting, cheating, backstabbing liars, and I hate you all. Her manager, MJ, tells her to not answer the phone or speak to anyone about her decision because she does not owe anyone anything. Asha has to announce that Kaylee is not competing, and China is obviously pissed because they came all this way to not even compete against the national champ again. Lauren and Carter try to explain what's happened and they try to convince Kaylee to compete again. Kaylee's not having it. Sneaking up to Lauren's garage apartment to have sex this whole time? No, no, he was just living up there. You've been living at Lauren's? Final time of the season. 
let's welcome Kaylee back into her reputation era. However, that era lasts 0.5 seconds because after talking with her dad, she surprises everyone by showing up to compete. She realizes that she has to face her fears about being a one-hit wonder and she just needs to prove everyone wrong. Kaylee gives a really heartwarming speech to her team. It's okay to have fear because that means that you have passion. And just for today, we're gonna leave that fear in here. You can just tell she's a really good leader and she's grown a lot over the season. So Rock's goal is to get five medals to beat the performance of the national team in Beijing. So Genji Cho, she is like the it girl from China. She is this 15 year old girl. She absolutely slays her floor routine. Haley kills her floor routine as well, which earns them their first medal of the day on floor and that's silver. So now they just need four more medals to beat the national team's performance in China. Emily slays the vault that she's been working on with Payson, which gets them the second medal of the day and Lauren absolutely nails her beam routine and gets the gold on beam but unfortunately she lands wrong and hurts her ankle that takes her out for the rest of the competition. Kaylee does her bar routine, but she doesn't meddle on bars. With Kaylee Cruz not meddling on bars, Sasha Belov needed Lauren Tanner to do so. That is when Sasha decides to put Hasten in. Even though she's terrified, she tries. I don't think you understand how iconic this is. This is history in the making. Hasten literally broke her back and this is her first performance back. Like we love a comeback and guess what? She slays. Emily is the last one up on bars and she's trying to to get The Rock their fourth and final medal of the day because that would match the amount of medals that the national team got against China. So Emily blocks out all the haters. Oh, her. Love that. So Kaylee is the last person to go on beam. And if she manages to medal, they can get their fifth medal of the day, which means that they would beat what the national team did. Before her routine, Sasha tells her to go all out for the gold and to add a triple twist into her routine. If she can nail it, she'll prove to everyone once and for all why she is the national champion. But if I don't land it, we won't beat the national team. But if you do, you are clearly the best gymnast in America and you rival the very best in the world. Haley is a queen, so of course, she slays that beam routine and secures the gold medal on the beam. Lauren better watch out. She may be dethroned as queen of the beam. I guess I should probably update you guys on the relationship drama between Emily and Damon because I've just been avoiding it at every turn. Long story short, they finally admit that they love each other, but Damon applied to some record company competition where if he wins, he gets a tour with Green Day and so Damon leaves and she doesn't get to say goodbye. Whatever. Back to stuff that's actually relevant. Haley finally calls Carl Carter and tells Carter that she loves him. I love you. I just do. And I know you're right. We're meant to be together. She's in her backsliding era. But while Kaylee is waiting for Carter to crawl through her window, Carter's busy making out with Lauren. And that is where season one leaves us. Wow. What a ride this was. But to end the video, I want to do a current state of the union. If you ever read The Click or watched the movie, Massey Block, the iconic 12 year old created the current state of the union. It's exactly what it sounds like. She states the current state of the union and states what's in and what out. If you don't get it, you'll get the gist as we're going on. Okay, in. We have The Rock, you know, Rock Girls for Life, Rocky Mountain Training Center, iconic. The Rock is in. Also in, miraculous back surgeries. Like, who knew? We love those. Another thing that's in, keggers. Like, we love a kegger. Gotta have them. The last thing that's in, dating musicians that are low-key losers. Apparently that's in. Everyone go find themselves a musician partner in general and make sure they have to be a loser and date them. It adds some drama spice to their life, you know? What's out? Working at the Pizza Shack. That is out. We hate the Pizza Shack. Another thing that's out, Ellen Beal. She is public enemy number one. She is just, she's bitter, she's old, and she's jealous. Also out, siblings. Specifically, Becca Keeler and Brian Kometko, who mysteriously disappeared. They will be missed. Hope they're well. We wouldn't know because they disappeared. And lastly, who's out? Lauren Tanner. That girl is a menace to society and she has to be stopped she does but yeah thank you guys so much for watching let me know if you guys like this video like this format like i said this was kind of like a test run if you guys enjoy it i'll do the following seasons and i'll do more shows as well love you